Welcome to another episode of Next Meridian Expedition. Today we're going to be talking about all the upgrades on Albatross. I like to call it Albatross 2.0 and the three subjects are electricity, engine power and storage. We are Nick and Mathilde and in 2022 we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia and Africa. We want to see it all. This is day 488 and we're in Peru. Welcome to the Next Meridian Expedition. After weeks in the gorgeous mountains of Peru, we leave behind the pure air, bright sun and gorgeous peaks, and we clean the mud off our defender, the albatross, before diving in the winter fog of the coastal valleys of Peru's capital, Lima. Welcome to Lima, the capital city of Peru. We arrived here yesterday evening. It was a bit of a shock. The city was foggy. The driving is chaotic. Nick loves chaotic driving, but I think we reached like another level last night. Driving in Lima is chaotic. Nobody respects no rules. It's literally fight for who gets priority. And uh, yeah, it's dangerous, but makes it interesting. It's already been a year and four months we're on the road. There's a few little things that we'd like to upgrade. Albatross 2.0 will have more power in terms of uh, electricity, more storage, and more power in terms of engine. I hope that we can finish everything by next week so that we can go back out there and uh, hit the road to the next direction. One week. Look at us two naive people. Sure we would get through our perfect plan in no time. I don't mean to spoil, but nothing went as planned. Not that I want to ruin the mood of Nick and Mathilde of the past. Let's them continue believe that they can be out of Lima in one week. That might be our friend. Ah, the defender guy is here, so we job can start. The clock is on. This is day one of our time upgrading the Albatross to transform it into Albatross 2.0. The first challenge when traveling in new countries is to find trustworthy garage and find a way to get your spare parts. Getting parts to come to South America are not that easy. So luckily we had Cody and Olivia with their car right back here who brought us a lot of the parts uh, so that we could do the jobs. A lot of people will say it will be hard to find mechanics. We didn't think so. Each country at the capital has a Land Rover Defender specialist. These guys, they have tons of Land Rovers. They know exactly where to find the parts, exactly how to fix your car. So technically, it's not that hard. So now we have the Albatross here. Nick is the new condition I work in there. And then this is the workshop where we're staying. It's the invitation of someone super nice who allowed us to like sleep here and uh, do all the work we need to do here. And what usually happens is that Nick is working with the mechanics down there to learn what they do. And I find myself a small working station to work on the videos. Our strategy for a stop like this one is divide to better conquer. So while Nick is working on the mechanics, I work on the videos. And Nick goes through his to-do list at light speed. In the first few days on the theme of energy and electricity, Nick knocks out the installation of a new cigarette plug, the installation of a new car battery. We bought a new Varta battery, so 12 volts, 95 amp hours, 850 amps and the installation of an aluminium panel for the new solar panels. Eight rivets here, eight rivets there. So, that's job done. On the theme of engine power, Nick proceeds with the remapping of our engine. Okay, the first part of the job is done. Silicon hose one, two, three, and the fourth one is down there. Because we are going to reprogram the engine. For the reprogram of the engine, it's a little stick like that that goes in the OBD uh, computer system and then we can reprogram the engine so it will bring it from 120 horsepower to 170 horsepower. Uh, a lot of travelers, overlanders, well-known travelers who have been on the road for many years uh, did the same um, reprogramming so we did not want to do it at first and after two years we finally got convinced so we're going to do it. The reason why is we feel like there's not enough torque and the second reason is uh, when we're starting first gear on a very steep hill off-road, it just cuts on us sometimes. 
and that's just tiring. So of course we are going to be very careful on how we accelerate, but it will be there in case we need it. And as you know, the last theme is storage. And that is probably what kept us the busiest and dragged beyond our anticipated deadline. So there's a lot of little jobs. And the final job is the wheel carrier. So the guys are still working at uh, making it all set. So the wheel carrier, here are the brackets of the wheel carrier. And it's going to be mounted here. Uh, that's the basket. It still, of course, has to be powder coated and cleaned out, but they're still working on everything. Nick literally killed his to-do list and before we go in more details on the storage theme, I have had a major success on my own. While Nick is at the garage, I have a lot of free time on my hands. So there's a wedding he would love to attend, we didn't know if we could go or not and I think we're going to make time for it and it's in just under two weeks. Problem in our world tour journey, we plan for fuel, we plan for food, we plan for mechanics, uh, we plan for visa, but we didn't plan for flying to a wedding in another country. And my challenge now is to find the cheapest flight possible to go to that wedding. I've seen a girl online who found crazy cheap tickets by using a VPN. So today I'm going to try that. We're going Lima, Cleveland, Cleveland, New York, New York, Lima. I hope we find something because that's a lot of flights. Travel saving hacks are the best kind of hacks. I could do this all day. For this one, you need a VPN. We already had NordVPN subscription, so we use that. Don't ask me why, but airlines and hotel booking websites sometimes change their prices based on the country where your internet connection is located. So the only thing I did is open my .vpn app and check the prices by changing my location. I tried from Singapore, I tried from Chile, and eventually I tried from France. Hurra! Hey Nick, I've been playing around with NordVPN and I found some tickets that are like $200 cheaper. It's actually pretty fun. Nick says, okay, I guess we'll go to the USA. We also use NordVPN to secure our data and connection from cyber criminals when we connect to public Wi-Fi and to access our subscription from French websites when we are abroad. We thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. We talked about it because we use it often. If you are interested, you can always get an exclusive deal with the code NMXP. And you can use the link in description. Let's just try it while booking your next holidays, because it is a 30-day money-back guaranteed. So, no risk. While I'm having fun finding deals for hotels and flights, Nick's at the workshop trying to get our new carrier finished. And that's not easy. Good morning and welcome to the Land Rover shop of Anibal. Tons of Land Rovers, we're gonna walk around uh, in a little bit. But technically here we are going to hopefully finalize all the little jobs with the wheel carrier. So, Flaco I call them, everybody calls them that, which is uh, skinny, so I'm technically Flaco as well. All right, as you can see here, Mr. Flacos, which means skinny guy, technically I'm Flaco as well, and Anibal are finishing all the last installations. Anyways, it's going forward slowly. But despite another three days of work and late night efforts at the last minute when we thought we could finally leave Lima, a new challenge came up. Because there's a new problem. So technically we're almost done with everything and we're probably gonna paint it all tomorrow morning. So that's how close we were to the end. And then the problem is, they're like, okay, now let's go test it all out. So we put the thing on the car and then we open it. Everything works perfectly on the box carrier. It looks great. Everything's great. And then we open the door with the tire and the bag and the tire hits the, the carrier. So that means the door only opens at 45 or 50 degrees instead of 90 degrees, you know, like we usually do. And they're like, oh, okay. How do you think it's okay for you to live like this? I was like, no, man, I'm not gonna install something and you know reduce the capacity somewhere else. Luckily, we were still able to work on another part of our storage work. The chassis boxes made by our friend George from Roverland had made it all the way from Belgium to Peru. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, George. This is such a nice little gift. Little chocolate and biscuits from Belgium. Incredible, you're a legend. <laughs> We're waiting four boxes and we get sugar. Get sugar. Incredible. You like that? Let's go. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, we just finished installing the chassis boxes from uh, Roverland. They look incredible. So as you can see here, there's a little clip. And on this side, we put a lock. They open like that. But what I really enjoy is that they have these seals. So it's really waterproof. And it flushes the same level as you can see here with the chassis. But it's totally installed. It looks incredible. Can't wait to use them. This will be used all for spare parts only. The chassis boxes took us a day to install, while the back wheel carrier proved to be a more challenging job and the days passed in Lima. Until finally, on day 15... Okay! We spent almost uh, 14 days in Lima, uh, four days doing some maintenance and then 10 days building the wheel carrier which is coming to us hopefully in the next hour so that we can install on the car. Now we are ready to go. We were supposed to stay here only a week and ended up staying two weeks. I think we need to get used to South American timing. It is 3 p.m. and we had an appointment with those guys at 10 a.m. So yeah. I mean, they just have five hours delay. What is five hours? Okay, let's set up this wheel carrier. It's coming together. Yes! <laughs> and it looks good too. Looks great. Yeah. Okay, night is here and we're still here uh, fixing everything else. I'm saying we, but it's mainly Nick and the guys from the workshop because I'm probably useless, but I can comment. That's all I can offer. So everything is tight here? It's good? Yes. yes. Super. Until night time and until eventually the famous carrier was set up and looking amazing on the back of the Albatross. Last part of our whole 2.0 Albatross build is the Starlink. We just picked it up this morning from the garage who uh, it was shipped to. And so we onboarded a Starlink for internet and uh, we even installed this little uh, socket here so that it could be fitted directly on the car so that we're not leaving it in the middle of uh, the gardens or in the middle of the landscapes while we're in the car. So we'll have less chance of getting stolen. And of course, we can always still have the possibility to move it around. So we can't wait to test it out. But I think Albatross 2.0 is practically done. We are finally wrapping up 15 days of work on the Albatross 2.0. Energy, power, storage. We crossed off our to-do list all the items. Let's ask Nick to summarize all of the upgrades. All right, to conclude everything we've done to Albatross 2.0, I know it looks very similar, uh, but there's a lot of little things that have been changed. So I'm just gonna go over the three ideas really quickly. And as a conclusion, we went for more power. So that's engine power. We went for more electrical uh, energy and thirdly for more storage. Now, as you have seen in the video, it shows the whole installation, but I'm going to quickly give you the why. So the more power, uh, the car is 3000 kilograms about, it's under the legal weight, so that's fine. The thing is that in these altitudes in the Andes, but also such a big world tour, we don't want to be losing power on second and third gear. So we went from 120 horsepower, which is the original to 170 horsepower. And because of that, we also changed all the silicon hoses to a five ply hose, which, um, makes it much stronger because of the new pressure. Now talking about the electrical power, uh, with our partner uh, Sunwear, we added two new solar panels on the roof. Why? Because we onboarded the Starlink, which is onboard Wi-Fi for our trip. And because of that, there's an extra um, usage of watts. So we got two panels on the roof, 120 watts each. A lot of people have asked us that they wanted to see the whole setup. So we're going to do a full video just on the installation of panels. Now regarding the storage, because of the Starlink, we ha had to find a spot for the Starlink. We do not have a roof rack, as you notice, and we do not want one. Reasons are multiple because of the balance on the road, because of the center of gravity, because of shipping. There's many, and we are happy with this. Um, so we wanted an extra storage box on the rear wheel, and that has the Starlink. That's why we built the wheel carrier box. 
and that's why we installed the two new chassis boxes so that we can move all of our spare parts from our couch which is inside the car to the two chassis boxes leaving us a spot under the the couch i think albatross 2.0 is ready uh, we're super excited and the reason why we're doing all this is because we've been on the road for a year and a half we figured out that a lot of the things we do need to be simple, they need to be fast, they need to be practical. Uh, now everything will be organized in a way and it just makes our life easier and that's it. So let us know what you think in comments. And now we're getting back on the road, direction, the wilderness. We can't wait. Let's go. That was a very different video this week. We hope you enjoy it. We are thus officially out of Lima. Up next, more Peru, more wilderness, more adventures. See you next week. And who says working on the car says Dan is back. Dan outfit is out. Dan, Dan ready to go. Dan the man. <laughs> Show me your little Dan. Where is it? The other way.